And um, I hope you've all had a chance to read Megan's minutes. Um, and if yes. some, someone would like to move to, unless you see any um, errors or omissions or anything, would someone okay. move to- I move to second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you, Megan. All right, now, M Megan, uh, Susie said that you, well, no, I think first, Julia, um, just tell us a little bit. I know it's it's um, not terribly relevant to the Historical Commission, but the- um, Well, it's still, it's interesting, you know. CPIC. Yeah, the MPIC. Um, the MPIC. It was, it, actually, I'm glad I volunteered because, Good. you know, this was a long, this was a two hour meeting. And I guess there's real issues in Cohasset about the sewerage, which I was unaware of. And it's, and just, it, it, just uh, I just got an email from um, Katie Dugan about how the public funds, that you know, what funds come into town, like excise tax, et cetera, et cetera. You know, what portion of that that you know provides income for the town? And it's just, it's fascinating. Um, but re regarding us. Um, I was asked to actually speak at this, you know, like give my two cents worth. And um, um, I said, well, we will obviously we're interested in the Harbor development. And they said, uh, well, you know, you should tell Jackie to get in touch with the Harbor Commission and she's already done that. Yeah. So that was sort of, okay, fine. Um, and I said, they said not to, uh, she also said not to worry, you know, that the demolition delay is not, you know, it might happen, you know, um, but they were very uh, um, interested in, in, in and seemed to be very pleased with the fact that we were putting out this uh, booklet. Well, that's, And somebody that's immediately, good. excuse me, uh, Jackie, but somebody immediately brought up the normal thing. And I said, well, that's, we had that in mind, but without, uh, with a slightly different slant. The, the what thing? The I Norwell. Didn't... Someone, no. someone oh, at yeah, that, right, the MPIC right, right. said, right, oh, right. well, Norwell did that. And, and I said, yes, so we're, we're doing that, but it, uh, with a different right with plant. own yeah. touch yes. to it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay. Well, and uh, just to finish, you know, and yeah. and uh, Megan and Susie and I are having that. Megan's arranged a Zoom meeting for us. Oh, that's very good. So we can. Well, she'll she should tell you about that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, well, thank Julia. Thanks. I appreciate you going to these meetings. It's probably not. What do they do? Meet once a month. And it's sort of like once every six weeks, but okay. you know, it, it's it's I'm becoming more and more fascinated by what's going on. So oh, that's that's good. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for your report. Okay, Megan, do you want to tell us about yeah. the, the brochure? I guess we'll call it a brochure. Yeah, we'll go with brochure. Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. So Julia, we I did set up that meeting. We did meet. Susie and I met last Thursday. Uh, um, I think you uh, flipped your calendar. But we're, we're definitely going to meet again um, very soon here. But yeah, we did have a quick um, conversation last week. And the status is we're kind of, we're narrowing down kind of the key 10 or so sections that we're, we're thinking we're going to land on. Um, kind of like the table of contents. So I, I feel like once we firm that up in the next weekish or so, I'm going to kind of put it into a little bit more of a digestible format and share it with you, Julia and Susie first. Um, I assume the next step would bring it back to the group. Yeah, that we'd certainly be very interested in, in uh, knowing, especially, you know, what you're going to cover in it. Yeah, exactly. I feel like that would be kind of important for you to kind of give the thumbs up on. Sure. And then from there, we'll figure out how we're going to get certain pieces written or pull from existing written pieces. Um, Susie was saying her husband is really well versed in kind of the environmental impacts to some of the historical areas and concerns in that regard. So he, and she said he, he could write up a little paragraph on, on that um, particular piece. So we'll figure out who's going to write what. Okay. Um, and it, we're, we're pegging, tell me how this sounds, we're pegging end of year for just full completion of the project. Is okay. that in line with end of year meaning june right end oh fiscal year i don't know good question yeah i think probably the fiscal year 
Because okay. that, that's, that'll be our, our last meeting and, until the following September will be yeah. uh, the, the mm. second uh, Monday in June. Okay, I'll get that confirmation. I'm not positive which which Susie was referring to, I guess, in my head, I thought December. June seems a little aggressive for having it like fully printed. Well, okay. Well, I mean, just, you know, do, do what you can. Um, it doesn't take long to get it, if, as long as we can actually do it through. Um, I used um, Printing Center USA. Okay. And I've, I've done a well, one thing through them, I did overnight prints for a smaller one, but I, I like the uh, Printing Center USA, and, and they'll do a really good job with the brochure. Mm -hmm. About how many pages do you think it's going to be? Ten? Okay. We're not going to do a big listing of houses like Norwell did. I think there's closer to 20-ish pages. Right. Well, the, yeah, it could be. It could be. They did. They have a long list at the end. Yeah. But we yeah. don't need to do that. Right. Does printer, printer USA, do you say printer USA, Jackie? Printing, Printing. Center. Printing Center okay. USA. Okay. Did they offer design services? Um, they have templates. You can, you can, oh. why don't you just look it up? Look up, you know, just yeah uh, it's all one word printingcenterusa.com okay and then you can see what they offer um wonderful okay I, I didn't i did my own design for for this project that i had um but we'll see and and actually you can present what you have and maybe among the the rest of us we can come up with a design too yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah we'll see i mean we have we'll work it out yeah okay well kind of laying out the content with photos will be a yeah. a third part of this writing yeah. designing and then printing i think kind of how it'll fall. Oh. Oh. and one last question for the group um we're planning on including kind of like a fun fact section mm -hmm. which jackie you you've certainly written pieces similar to we'll pull from. But Susie wanted to make sure I put it out to the group to, um, if you have any kind of, uh, it's kind of, we're thinking fun facts that people don't know much about um, when they think of Cohasset, kind of um, more unique, kind of off the beaten path, less highlighted aspects that they would find in a simple Googling kind of thing. So if anybody has like things you've driven by or kind of random, random points of interest that are a little more um, obscure, share them, email them um, if something comes to mind and we'll add it to the list. I thought that was so cool about the state police barracks in Norwell with the chicken thieves. Uh, we can't top that. Wait, I don't even know what you're talking about, Julia. The what did book, I miss? In the, book, in the Norwell booklet, the, the reason there's Ew. a state police barracks in Norwell, which I'd always wondered about, was because chicken farming was so big in Norwell that they had a big problem with poultry thieves. Oh and my that's God. That's why, yeah, like as opposed to Hanover, you know, anywhere else down here. And then the interesting connection with that, with Cohasset, is that Hector Pelletier, who's arguably one of the most best Merle, I hope you agree with me. One of the best yeah, police chiefs point him. Uh, Cohasset ever had um, was came to Cohasset from the Norwell State Police Barracks. Am I right, Merle? Or did he? Yeah, he, he, he came to, down he on, on a Sundays. Down. He used to come down around the post office, which my father had, and he'd check yeah. in to show that he was doing his route. Yeah. We'd go around, and that's how they got to know each other. And my grandfather asked him if he wanted to be. Police chief in Cohasset. Oh no! Oh, oh, that's interesting. Oh, huh? That's so there's our Norwell connection. <laughs> <laughs> well, another interesting point that not many people know about was during the Second World War, we had uh, some uh, German uh, friends down on Dome Street. Really? In Dome Street, which is oh. uh, Roy Fitzsimmons now, but uh, they the uh, federal. What were they called? Fed, feds came down and got them. They, they used the same type of cars they use now, the big SUVs with the black car. You know them for 100 miles away. <laughs> and they said they were doing them then. They stopped at, we were, uh, a bunch of the kids were hanging around the cemetery and they, they stopped us asking us where, where Don Street was, which is right there. 
and pointed to it, and they, they went down. The next thing we know, they're going back, and we didn't know much about it because it was pretty much quiet. Gosh. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Um, moving on, I can talk a little bit about the Cohasset Savings Bank application. I've, I've done a fair amount of work on the application to see if the building is eligible for nomination to the National Register. And uh, David Wadsworth had already filled out a form and it actually had been accepted as being eligible, but that was 20 years ago. <laughs> So this this uh, woman um, who I think she actually lives in Duxbury, um, Betsy Friedberg or Friedland, something like that. She's uh, in charge of the this program for the uh, Massachusetts Historical Commission. And she said, well, we have to do it all over again because things might have changed. So I, um, I actually, I, I read through a Bigelow and Pratt's history of Cohasset, the narrative history. And I was able to fill in quite a bit. They, they want a, a huge amount of detail in the final application. If, if you're accepted, if the building is deemed eligible, then you have to fill out a very long form that um, gives a lot of historical context to the, to the building and so forth. And um, so I, I actually expanded a lot on what David had said in, in his application. And I took pictures of the exterior of the building. Larry Cortell, who is the managing director, is very, very nice. I spoke to him earlier and he's taken pictures of the interior. I didn't feel comfortable going in there because the upstairs is now office space for um, Palmer Capital, I think. And that's Gordon Dean. I don't know if any of you know Gordon yeah, Matoko. Matoko's husband, right? That, that's her yeah. husband. And, I, you know, I, I I wouldn't feel right going up there, but they want the historical... He's so nice, though, Jackie. He, he is love. I know he is. He's a doll. I'm sure if you called him, he would... But but Larry's done it, so it's... it's oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm just waiting to get the pictures from Larry. He's... Uh, He's just been extremely busy. So anyway, um, and then I also need to find out if they've made any major alterations to the interior. And I think he had, because when I went to speak to him, everything looked new. It looked beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But I need to know whether he's made any major changes. So once I get that information from him, I can send the the form into the, the um, Mass Historical Commission, but would you all be interested in seeing the form before I send it in, just so that you you know what's involved? Is this of interest or should I just go ahead? I, no, I would like to see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, it, I think it's kind of interesting. I, I enjoy doing it. Um, mm -hmm. I learned a lot by doing some of this research. The, the thing that I, and I, I feel I might be able to do the historical narrative, which is what they call this. The other part of it is the architectural description. And oh my gosh, you have to be a professional architect to, to handle that. This preliminary part was done with um, someone from, from the public archeological lab and somebody there must have known something about architecture because it was pretty good. And I, I looked up some information on a, a book on American architecture that I have at home. So I was able to embellish a little, a little bit, but for the, the, the big application, uh, you have to describe every single detail and know what's important and what, what isn't, which I certainly don't know. Uh, so, we, we might have to hire a consultant. And I was surprised, David, who was just, you know, so knowledgeable about Cohasset, he was sort of the embodiment of Cohasset history himself. He, he worked with a consultant who happens to be this Betsy Friedland uh, from the Mass Historical Commission. And she's, that was 20 years ago, and she's still in charge. So she's no, no spring chicken, but, um, 
but she she does know her stuff. So we might have to spend a little bit of money on a consultant to help us fill out this form, which is not at all unusual. I think almost everyone nowadays does hire a professional to, to help uh, fill in all the details. So um, that's, a, that's a good way to start though, Jackie, as you said. Yeah, yeah you know, a good way to, to start our first, to yeah. learn for all of us to learn how to do it. And, yeah, and, yeah, and David unfortunately never really shared what he was doing with anyone else. So it was a total mystery to me when I first came on the uh, commission about oh, six years ago, whatever it was, um, I, I just had no idea what they were even talking about. So anyway, I want everyone to uh, be familiar with what's involved. And uh, I think it's something that we should always be working on. It's something, you know, there are a number of, of buildings in Cohasset that probably deserve to be on the register. And if not, there are historic districts. And Hingham is the one that has many historic districts. And, and this, um, the, the, the president of the Hingham Historical Commission called me up once to ask questions about windows. I don't, I don't know why she thought I would know anything about that. But anyway, she called me up and we chatted a little bit and I said, well, do you, ha do you have uh, a, a committee for each of these districts? And she said, no, no, we have one big committee because whenever anyone wants to change something in a historic district, they do have to go through a process. So that's something that we might want to consider someday. And if, if we ever do get a uh, demolition delay bylaw in this uh, town, which could be challenging, I think we would also have to put together a committee that has like a subcommittee that has uh, architectural knowledge and, and so forth, because you're, you're making decisions that really affect people, the builder's livelihood, uh, the happiness of the homeowner and so forth. It's, it's not something to be taken lightly, I don't think. So but we can discuss that later uh, if it comes, comes to pass. But anyway, um, so I, I will show you what this form looks like and uh, the pictures too. I think we took some very good pictures of the exterior and I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, Larry has. He also found some old pictures of the bank, which could be interesting to, to add. Okay, then I wasn't going to talk about the captain's walk, but um, tomorrow night at, uh, at nine o'clock, the selectmen are going to be discussing the Harbor Improvement Committee, if, if that's what it is. That's Tim Davis's committee. And I think we need to know how, how viable is their plan to really totally renovate the harbor area? Because if it looks like it's, it's not going to happen, we might want to consider just going ahead and renovating the, the captain's walk ourselves regardless. But uh, we need to give that some thought. The other thing is, of course, the um, Cohasset Harbor Inn. And I don't know, Julia, did, did they discuss that on the um, No, they, everything was, it, it was general terms. Okay, yeah. And, and saying X amount of space is gonna be allocated to this public park. And yeah. Tim Davis was, you know, yeah. he had been asking the pri the previous meeting, he'd said something about us putting our signs up and, but I brought it up again and he, he was silent, so. Yeah, I, I guess nobody knows quite what to do at this point. Um, my feeling is if, I'm almost sure that George McGoldrick and Lubitz, I don't know his first name. Uh, Teddy. Ted? Ted Lubitz. Ted Lubitz. I think they'll be successful in being able to put this uh, residential uh, commercial um, complex in, in that area where the Cohasset Harbor Inn is. And if they do that, it seems to me the whole sidewalk area is going to be taken up with equipment and, and everything. And do we really want to, to um, do our, put in new signs and things uh, at that? And are we going to, are we going to lose the Sydney well 
No, that? no, that'll be there. Yeah. No, I, I that that'll stay. Okay. They're not going to do anything there. They, just, they don't dare now. <laughs> 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 but anyway, if if I'm going to look uh, at the selectmen's meeting at nine o'clock to see what Tim has to say and. All of you are certainly welcome to do that too. Uh, and we need to give this some thought as to when, I, we definitely have to improve the, the uh, captain's walk because it's, it's really, it's in disrepair right now. But it's, it's a question of when and whether um, we want to change the signs a little bit so that they're, they could be lower, a little bit more like uh, what we have at the Lawrence Wharf for Captain John Smith. You know that you can you walk up to it and then you you just look down and read it rather than looking up at the uh, sign as they are now. So anyway, something to think about. Um, aside from that, those are the the main things that I thought we needed to talk about. Is there anything on your minds that you would like to bring up? It's a point that. Uh... They're redoing the store across the street that Lily Cecilia bought. And I just, they, because it's in bad shape, a lot of rot in it. Oh, sure. I just noticed that the timbers that go across the whole the second floor are old, old uh, trees. They just took trees, cut them down, and made them as uh, supports. Oh, uh, you should take pictures of those. I was thinking of that. I need to take oh. pictures of it. Definitely. Yeah, because I drove by the other day and saw they were in there doing stuff. That was exciting. Yeah. Every, every time they tear something down, they find some more rot in the place. Uh, well, is she going to preserve the building the way it looks? I mean, the appearance of the building? She's going to make it look like it used to look. This, like uh -huh. the book front there, she's going to take that off, put the wooden back on, put the steps back on it on the front. Oh, nice. And she's going to keep it as a general store on that end of it. And then she's going to put a JJ's on the end where the garages are falling down. No kidding. So ice cream? Yeah. Oh, well, my gosh. It's a big business during the summertime now. Oh, right? she'll get it. That'll be huge. Yeah. That'll be a That's wonderful project. That's really awesome. Project. In fact, you're talking about beer and wine. That sounds good. I don't like the <laughs> wine, though, but I'll take the beer. Oh, that, oh, that's terrific. So how far has she... They've gotten in there apparently. Not, not very far yet. It's just very slow work. Of course, they've had bad weather. Yeah. Right. Terrible weather's been terrible. Yeah. Right. terrible. Yeah. That was my my coke time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's wonderful. And is is going to be a general store, so groceries yeah. and same, pretty much the same as it was before. Except I don't know where she's going to sell meat because my father sold meat and yeah. In fact, they used to say downtown if. Uh, and the guy's hardware, and they didn't have something there. They said, if you don't have it here, go up to Browns. If you don't have it, you don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's now. Do you live across the street from that? You where do you live, Merle? Where, where's your I live house? Across the street, uh, on uh, I live on Beecher Street, but it's uh, it's down down towards the uh, reservoir. Okay, and, and across happens. across the street from Brown's store, right? Right. right. Okay. Like the two houses they just built the that the house they tore down was built in the eighteen hundreds. Yeah. And uh, right. they put two new houses in. One guy bought it online. He never saw the house. He yeah. Bought it online. That's happening today. Thousand wow. hmm. dollars. The only problem with that is it's going to make my taxes go up now because they're going to be make mine worth more. <laughs> Yeah. Well, if, if there's a demolition delay bylaw, I guess that's something that, you know. Well, I, I, I uh, Bajaklin bought it originally. I don't know if you know Bajaklin or not, but he's a contractor. No. And he's a sleazy, kind of a sleazy guy. Yeah. So I asked him, I said, well, can you get some pictures of it and things like that? And he says, well, I, and it was at the conservation, so I said, just mention to them that it is a historic building. Yeah. And it, need, it needs to be pictures taken and things like that. I said, we can't stop anybody from building in there or taking it down, but we'd like to have something, some wreckage of it. Oh, sure. And he says, oh, I'll take care of that. So the next day I come by, drive by, and there goes the house. Well, I think Mark took pictures of it, right? Yeah, I just took a I couple. Got a, I got a couple pictures of it. Yeah. 
I mean, it was a picture, just like a two, like one or two pictures of the outside, and that was that was it. Like that, that's what it looked like before they did it. I can't see it. You can hold it up. Hold a it up high. further, yeah. Um, oh yeah. Oh, that's a that's a that's, that's a, good a really thing. good picture. Yeah, that is a good yeah. picture. This in here is a historic site house too. Hold it up more, Merle. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Hmm. Oh, nice. For what I remember, I, it I think I give these I give these pictures to the people that live there now. You ask them if they want them; they can either put them up or uh, throw them away. But I give them something to show them. That's really nice. Well, you know, the historical society might will would certainly be interested in putting that in their photo archive or something. Yeah, I, I, I was going to talk to uh, Linda about it and see what she thought whether she wanted one or not. I, I made about three or four copies of them. Oh yeah. Oh, I think they definitely would. Because they, they do have, um, I know that there's a, a folder on Elm Street, for, for example, and mm. that would be part of this, uh, this bank application because they want to know the history of the street and so forth. Um, so I'm sure they'd, they'd have one on Beechwood Street and that would really be valuable to them. I don't know, what, what's the story with the church, do you know? The Beechwood and Church? The church Society owns it now. But it was built in 18, 1852 or 53. Yeah. Somewhere around there. And it was it cost a whole total of fifteen hundred dollars to build it. Yeah. Well, of course they it's been preserved now because the historical society yeah, is right. using they, it. They, so they're they, I'm sure they're not going they would never tear it down. They no. no. It's in good shape. It's always been kept up good. Yeah. And of course, they use the basement to display the old but fire. The fire, the fire truck in there, the right. old the original fire truck. Yeah, yeah. So that's that seems to be okay. Mm. So anyway, does anyone else have anything they wish to add or? Oh. Okay. Well, the next meeting will be the second Monday in April. We're we're getting there. Um, and by that time, I hope to have maybe a little bit more clarity about what to do about the captain's walk. Um, and that'll be a, a big project, actually. Have you, uh, have you talked to George McGovern at all about the captain's no, walk? No. Uh, because about, he's very good. I mean, he might willing to be, help, be willing to help out and do something. Okay, there. rather than just waiting on Tim. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll listen to Tim tomorrow. And then, and then, um, Unless some, does any, Mark, are you interested in, in um, sort of uh, I, being involved? That does sound interesting, but I, I, I'm not sure, you know, with the things that go on here, like in terms of, I'd like to, I'd like to, I know LID is part of, going to be part of it because of the school committee. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure how the chips are going to fall with all the other things that go on. Um, are you moving? With, at that time with, with my kids. <laughs> okay. Are you moving out of town or you're going to stay in town? Uh, we're, we're in town. We'll be moving to uh, 107 Sawyer Street. So that was built in 1860 mm -hmm. um, by mm -hmm. Levi. It would be L.L. Nichols. Like, um, was it Lincoln Nichols? And so it's right across from the parking lot to the uh, music circus. Oh, yeah. And so I, I was one of those things that having rented in Hingham in an old house. And when we were doing the home inspection on this place, I love being in the basement. The basement's where it's at, really. Um, it was a great earth basement. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's uh, clearly work that needs to be done. Um, the the floors, like, I'll, I'll be happy to document like the photos of the outside and underneath and the inside, because right now it's empty. And once we pass papers, we're looking to um, you know, just freshen up the floors and, you know, fresh coat of white paint. Mm. Um, it's great. I just love how the floors are not level. <laughs> because they, they all like undulate. It's just like, no it's, so cool. it's, it's the best thing we, there is a, there is work that needs to be done. Like the siding and the sill is, you know, rotted out. Um, but you can, you can tell that it's, you know, in the basement, you can tell that it was all knob and tube and, you, you can see the some of that still in the attic that we got to take care of, but I'm really excited and you know so is Lid. I know 
we've had the discussion of like, you know, we try to just doing our best to try to keep it as close to, you know, what it is. Right. And if we like one of the things that, you know, attracted us to the property was the fact that it's close to both schools. It's close to the village, but we're figuring that maybe we could sneak in um, somehow like a two car garage in that area. But if we do that, we have to, whatever we put in has to match the house. Right. Like, so that's the only other thing with that is the windows and the old windows with the cords, the weights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so we have to replace, obviously those are old when single pane and we have to replace those. Right. Um, no, just get storm windows. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my I had those. My no, children will lose the their fingers. I replaced some of the windows at my old house. And I still had those wonderful old fashioned windows. Oh, we love them. And I miss them. You know, I, I'm here <laughs> at my condo, which was built in the 1980s, and yeah. there's no, there's the no windows <laughs> suck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, but, you know, it's it, the nice thing about it is that gas comes right to the, um, right onto the property. So we can put it. Yeah. And I have to be, I have to do oil heat. Yeah. We can, you know, hook this. in the gas and yes. do all that fun plumbing, but uh, we're excited. You know, just, we're definitely going to try to keep it as nice as to what it is. It's a great location, too. It's near the library, right? Yes. I mean, cool. great. And yeah, exactly. Art center, I mean, yeah, it's a wonderful, it's a great place for, for you know, kids. They can walk everywhere. Well, that's it. I mean, my sister's right around the corner on Tower Lane. My mom's a little further away on Pond Street, but, um, oh, nice. you know, it's, it's. I, I like old houses, yeah. old, old things, so that kind yeah. of suits us both and how old are the girls now um nine and seven yeah oh my god <laughs> i mean they'll be able to walk home yeah. from school it's fantastic wow that's not gonna make them happy though <laughs> they're excited they're like well, now, like, yeah and she's like i get to walk yeah. to school <laughs> <laughs> well that's nice yeah yeah well, congratulations. Well, thank that, you. That, that's a, a big step. It is. It is. Um, and, you know, it's certainly a big commitment, but I can't wait to, you know, take some photos of the outside, take some photos of the inside. I'll, I'll put it to, I'll try to put it together. Yeah. And, and show uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and, it, and send it to everybody. Good. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That'd be oh, you're great. welcome. All right. Anything else? Does it, <laughs> Megan, do you want to share anything? <laughs> 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 Oh, I just have to apologize to you, Megan, for not knowing about the meeting last week. That's okay. I this yeah. week. <laughs> I know. That's okay. I think I'll give you a call next time. Julie, Susie had said, give her a ring. Yeah. Um, I noticed before, she said just that I wasn't sure. good about responding to emails, which is quite true. So. <laughs> it's okay. Well, thank I'm you abashed. All. Uh, thank you all for, for coming to this meeting. And uh, we'll see you in another month. Definitely. Not definitely. sooner. Okay. Okay. I think we're all set. Bye, Bye everyone. Yeah. Bye, too. Uh, leave meeting. Yeah. <laughs>